Hi, how you doing? Today I'm going to show you how to change a Honeywell thermostat. So I have this Honeywell and it's been working great. Uh, it's Wi-Fi enabled and I have no problems with that. But the problem that I've been having is it's in the middle of my hallway. And what happens is it's here and the heat from the first floor is coming up through the stairs and it's heating up the thermostat. And what's happening is that the thermostat reaches the level where it cuts off and it thinks that the second floor is nice and warm but what happens is the rooms are all cold so i can't really move the spot i have to rewire everything so what i did instead was i got the t9 thermostat from honeywell and the reason i got this one is because this one comes with two sensors and the two sensors will allow me to have one here in the hallway and then put the other sensor somewhere on the second floor in one of the other rooms and what I could do is either uh, take an average of the temperatures in both rooms and the thermostat will work off that or I can program the thermostat to actually work off the second sensor like at night or whenever I want to have a more even keel temperature in the second floor so hopefully this will help and I'm going to show you guys how to do it so here's the T9 smart thermostat with smart sensor it's actually a pretty good unit it works with Google Assistant works with Alexa. Uh, it's pretty efficient, has people detection if you want to use that. It helps balance out the cold and hot spots um, and offers a second sensor which is very important for me. So uh, let's open it and see what we got. So here's the way it comes packaged. We have the installation guide on the left here. Uh, the actual thermostat is right here. It comes with a separate wall plate. This is where you're actually going to be running the wires. The room sensor comes in a separate little box here and as I mentioned before you can put this sensor in another room uh, and it'll help you balance the hot and cold on your floor a little bit more evenly than just having one thermostat. And then we have a C-wire adapter. Uh, this is very important. You, you need a C-wire in order to power this. If you have line voltage going into your thermostat or you have an older thermostat, it's probably not going to work. So make sure you have a C-wire uh, and if you do but it's not in your unit, you can use an adapter to, to kind of fix it and, and make it work for you. We're not going to go over this today because I already know I have a C-wire, uh, but just be aware of that. So let's take a look at the wall. Here's the thermostat I have, so the first thing we need to do is take this one off the wall. Uh, make sure your power is off and your unit is off as well. So this one pops right out. So here are my wires. What I suggest you do is actually take a picture of the setup. So you remember how everything goes. I do this all the time. And as you can see, I have that C wire, which is this blue wire going in there. If you don't have that C wire, you're gonna have to use that adapter to, to help it work for you. All right, so these are some of the tools we're gonna be using. I'm gonna need a little tiny screwdriver to get into, um, get those little screws out. Got a Phillips, got a needle nose. I also need a, a 316 drill bit in order to put the anchors in. And then I have my drills. And I think that's pretty much all I need. All right, let's get to work. And the wall plate on this unit is where you put all the different wires. So hopefully you took a picture of the wires beforehand so you know exactly where they go. Usually they're color coded or you have little labels on them. Uh, so the first thing we need to do is kind of set it up on the wall. And we have these holes here where we're going to be screwing the, the screws in. Um, if you have a stud behind it, you might be able to find the stud, but you're definitely going to need to put anchors which actually come with the box. So let's measure exactly where it's going to go first. And in my case, I actually have two holes from the previous one that I want to cover up with the new one. So I want to center this to make sure that this is actually in the middle and the new unit will cover those. So what you want to do is you want to mark exactly where you're going to go. And always try to aim for the middle of the hole in case you want to move it a little bit, it'll give you, you know, it'll give you a little bit of play. All right, great. So let's drill the holes. So these are the anchors that came with the unit. Uh, according to the instructions, you're either going to get red ones or yellow ones. If you have a yellow one, it's a 316th bit. So that's what I used in my 
drill and we're just gonna drill the holes here. There you go. Now I'm not drilling one here because this is actually on the stud and I don't need to drill one because it's gonna go right into the wood. So once you drill the holes, you, you'll need a hammer to hammer in the anchors. You put it in first, you kind of set it in with your finger, and then you push it in like that. Same thing here, you push it in with your finger, and you hammer it in, and then you have the anchors for the sheet rock. So once we have the anchors, everything's pretty much ready to go, except we have to wire the cables. And I would suggest with this particular unit, you obviously wire it in before you screw it on. It'll be a lot easier. Now this unit actually has the insert plugs on the inside here, and they have these tabs on the outside that'll help hold the wires in. It's actually a little tricky to get them in here, um, so bear with me here. So once you kind of push it in, the tab will go down and it's kind of locked in there. If you want to take it out for some reason, just press the tab down again and then it'll, it'll just come out. So there goes the yellow one. And that's pretty much how I wire. Next thing we want to do is kind of tuck the wires in the back. Make sure that it'll fit in when you squeeze it in. So then after you pretty much wired everything, you just need to screw it into the wall. Uh, it comes with screws, with these screws right here, which I felt were a little bit too long for this top one because I already have a stud behind it. So I got my own, you know, a little shorter screw. But anything with a pan head could probably work. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the top screw first and I won't put it all the way. I'll just kind of put it just enough to hold it in place and then I'll put the other anchors and then I'll tighten everything at the same time. Once again, don't put it in all the way. Just put it in enough to hold it. So once you kind of shimmy it around a little bit and figure out exactly where you want it. You can tighten it. Now you want to be careful with this not to put it too tight because this is plastic and you don't want it to break. It feels pretty secure. All right, and we close the tab and let's put the plate on. If you look on the back of the face plate, you have these pins that align with the holes on the wire plate. So what I would suggest is look at the groove on the top, aligns with the groove up here, you bring it in like this, and then you snap it in. Once you snap it in, uh, if you had the power off, go and turn the power on, the screen will light up and it's time to get started. So I'm not going to go through the, uh, the setup, you know, you can uh, look online or you can go to Honeywell.com for that, uh, but hopefully this will help somebody. Um, it's pretty easy, leave your comments below and subscribe, thank you.